Hello, Eight of Cups family. Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your short horoscope for Scorpio season. Happy November, guys. It's uh, definitely a very intense month to say the least. Uh, Scorpio season is always intense. It just is. It's about the changing. It's about the, the transformation. It's about the new growth. Um, which often entails the shedding and the letting go. I like to always remind people that when we look at the whole of a season, it's very much deeply connected to the seasons in the Northern Hemisphere. So to get a good idea of what Scorpio is about, you wanna take a look at what's happening in nature right now. What is going on is there's a certain amount of death taking over our environment. Things are not thriving. There's a lot of beauty in death, which is why if you are lucky enough to be in the Northern Hemisphere, um, in more of the North American regions where the leaves begin to turn these beautiful colors and everything looks vibrant and beautiful and alive, and then things start to shed, the leaves fall off and we see the bare bones of what's going on. And that's what Scorpio season is. It's the shedding so that we could see the bare bones of things. Scorpio also represents the underworld, the swamp. And oftentimes during Scorpio season, we tend to find out information that was otherwise hidden from us. Now, that could be due to a million different things from um, external circumstances, other people lying to you, um, other people manipulating the situations, or it could just be how you manipulate or you know disempower yourself in some way. Scorpio represents kind of the investigator, and it also represents you know in financial terms um, a reconciliation. So it's a great time for assessment. Oftentimes you look at nature again, going back to this nature, and we tend to see the animals that are. Um, getting ready for the winter months, getting ready for their hibernation, making sure they have enough food, making sure that, you know, and this is kind of where we're at mentally as well. We're in the preparation for winter. A lot of us are um, assessing our finances in certain ways as well. And, and you'll see this um, play out absolutely this month as far as the economy goes. There's going to be a lot more questions coming up and we're going to want to get to the bottom of stuff. Why does this work that way? Why is this happening? What does this mean? You'll probably, I often see, um, because Scorpio does rule an investigative and journalism kind of thing, you're going to see a lot of news stories come out that could be somewhat shocking and it could really change the way that you look at things. And I've been telling everybody, I don't care what side you're on of the political game or if you're just completely sick of it. There's no way we're not affected. And it's probably a, a good idea to pay attention to what's happening with a healthy amount of detachment. And the Jupiter in Aquarius is gonna help us with that. We can't be so attached to outcomes. We know that with Jupiter moving through Aquarius, and we're definitely gonna know that, know that when Jupiter starts to move through Pisces, that this is not a time for attachments. It is a time of release and letting go and understanding where we are in the bigger picture of things. The saving grace is we're moving into Sagittarius season and that's going to be a really a beautiful, hopeful, regenerative time if we put in the hard work now. So end of October, most of November is going to be really getting to the bottom of our shadow work. This is going to fall in a different part of all of our charts. So for some of us, we're getting to the bottom of where we are financially. What's holding us back? What's stopping us from making these transformations? There's going to be an emphasis on our need for freedom. Obviously, as you could say, things are playing out in the collective as a need for freedom. A lot of people are afraid that their rights are being stripped from them and that Venus and Sag and then as Mercury starts to move through Sag and the sun moves through Sag, um, there's gonna be a bigger emphasis on our freedom. 
And we have to figure out what's holding us back before we figure out how to become free of it, right? We've got to get to the bottom of these stories that we tell ourselves. And the great thing about Scorpio is that it's so deeply psychological. This isn't about like the little stuff. It's about really getting to the bottom of things psychologically. Um, it's about allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. Now, I always say that there's always two very drastically different ways that this energy can express itself. And the lower realm of Scorpio is to be super protective, very vindictive, um, very secretive and private, and doesn't really like vulnerability. But these are also the qualities that it requires in order to have that evolution. And we're all clearly on this path of evolution. So if we can't be vulnerable in our relationships, vulnerable in ourselves, if we can't take those risks, then the alternative to that is that things will simply stay the same. And the fixed signs oftentimes like things to stay the same, even if they're not comfortable. However, this month, we're going to get an idea of where that comes from within us. What is holding us back? What's keeping us from making these changes? What are those old habits or those old storylines we told ourselves? What's the fear? Really, the Scorpio season is what is the fear? And if you're doing or operating out of a place of fear, you can kind of expect to be cracked wide open in this area. You know, if we want or need certain things or people to behave a certain way or to stay the same and not allow these things to change and grow, then that's where we hold ourselves back as well. And this is a moment of breakthrough for that as we have a new moon in Scorpio making an opposition to Uranus in the beginning of the month. This happens on the 4th and this is a really big energy for these huge breakthroughs. A lot of us are going to figure out why we do the things we do and that we don't want to do them anymore. Now, even in terms of like our diet and our food, what are we ingesting energetically is a super big part of the storyline this month. Now, I know I just said that we have to pay attention because Scorpio season is going to demand our attention to get to the bottom of these stories. Who do we believe? What do we believe? How's it going to affect us? How do we want to change? Of course. But there's also this energy of allowing the transformation to occur. Remember, there's things we have to let go of. So we have to take a good look at ourselves, psychologically, how we do things, how we hold on to things. And we also have to reassess where would we be? Would we be better off if we let some of these things go? Some of us, this is like cleaning out the closets, cleaning out the basement kind of stuff. Some of us, this is reassessing our finances. You know, there's this emphasis on that freedom, which means that we're going to want to shed some stuff so we can be freer. Sometimes fate has a way of taking care of this for you. You know, oftentimes I see in these transits, um, you know, you, you want to travel, you want to go all these different places, but you have like an elder pet at home. And these transits can come in and kind of end that storyline, not because you wanted it to end, of course, but because the universe says it's time. It's time for this phase to be over and this adventure to begin. It's not always easy. And oftentimes Scorpio energy can be painful, but it's about confronting and feeling the pain and then moving through it. It's about allowing things to end so we can create the new story. A lot of us collectively are having these stories play out in our careers and in our finances, for sure. This is going to be an overwhelming theme, especially as Venus starts to move into Capricorn. This is not a comfort level for Venus at all. Venus in Capricorn means that we've got to kind of hold back a little bit. We've got to, again, like I explained with the animals, what are they doing? They're making sure they have enough food for the long winter. And we have to pull back and make sure that we have enough resources to get us through the harder times. Some of us need our resources to be a form of faith. Some of us, it's, it's actually quite literally financially. Some of us, it's support from other people. There's needs 
there's wants and there's something in between here. And it's those necessary tools that we need to recreate this next transition phase. Guys, 2022, Jupiter moving into Pisces. It's a six year. This is a very spiritual time for everybody on the planet. And oftentimes that means that because we have to renew our faith, there might be external circumstances that are making you really lean on it at this time. Some of us are facing losing our jobs or our careers. Some of us are facing having to take our children out of school. These are all very real considerations that are going on for people at this time. And as you could see that all of those options can create an energetic field within us of fear. And we got to look that fear right in the face and say, well, what's the worst case scenario and how do I prepare for it? What can I do to strengthen my resolve and my faith when things aren't really going my way? And what do these things mean? What do these roadblocks mean? How do we change these things? The universe wants you to change. Eclipse season is when these things become necessary. It's when the universe sweeps in and makes the changes anyways. So it's a good time to confront your fears. It's a great time to get to the bottom of the hows and whys and the whats. It's a good time to look at what you see for the future and what are the changes you can make right now in order to move for, toward that path. If anybody is suffering depression, um, and again, there's so much Saturnian energy um, for the past year or so, really the past several years, that we could feel this culmination and we could say to ourselves, man, I just don't feel good. I feel achy. I feel tired all the time. I don't feel optimistic. Of course, we're embodying this energy and we're also embodying the energy of those that we're surrounded with by the news that we're watching, by, you know, just all the craziness that's happening. Maybe it's a good time for some of us to address that, maybe by seeking therapy in some way, seeking some kind of healing dualities. It's a great time for that. It's a great time to dig into our dream interpretations. Um, and it's also, like I said, a great time to look financially deeper into these things. And, and what do we need? Is there things that we could sell or get rid of in order to free up more financial money, to free up our time? Maybe there's sacrifices we can make so we don't have to work a full-time job so that we can give more time to our creative projects, which are going to become so important in the next few months as that node moves to the very anoretic degrees of Gemini and Sag. And we have this full moon eclipse coming up in Taurus. And I just want to remind everybody that Taurus does rule the throat chakra. And it is in the second and third deacons of um, this Taurus energy that we're dealing with between the eclipse and where Uranus is located. Now, the second deacon of Taurus is Virgo. So again, mundane astrology, the things that are taking place now is quite literally changes for the way that we serve others. So you're looking at these changes with the police. You're looking at these mandates affecting, um, you know, the medical um service-oriented things, uh, pilots, you know, these are all people that, and, and even the military is ruled by, by Virgo. So you're looking at people, massive amounts of the collective that are going through these changes and having to confront these fears of whether, you know, if I don't want to get a vaccine, am I, is, is this worth losing my job or losing my career or all these years of college and the investments that I put into them? These are not easy decisions. And that's where we can kind of trust these eclipses to come through and change our momentum towards our destiny. And so Venus and Sag, Mercury is going to be moving through Sag. Eventually the sun is going to catch up and move through Sag at the end of the month, closer to this transit. And Taurus also rules the throat chakra. And there's a need for expressing our self-worth here. What are our priorities? What are our values? we're gonna begin to associate strongly with some very literal hopes and values that we have. What do we want that new life to look like? What do we want these new structures that we're creating to look like? 
and it has to be more authentic and of ourselves. Jupiter is going to demand this at the end of Aquarius. There's no more masking things, quite literally. There's no more masking what we want and what we desire. It's just simply this energy is too big within us for it to be ignored. So it's a really beautiful time for us to assess what really matters to us. Take ownership of the things that we truly want and desire and to let go of the rest. Now, this month is a lot about compromise. We're going to have to find the compromise. If you are in any kind of a Scorpio energy in which you um, can't accept a loss in some way, because Mars is going to move into that area in Scorpio, it's going to trigger our egos a lot. And again, I'm going back to those two different forms of that Scorpio energy. If we don't get our way, we could be very vindictive. We can become very manipulative. We're going to feel this need to control situations. This comes from a deep-seated, deep-rooted need to be in control so that we don't have to confront the unknown. The other side of Scorpio is if you let go, Soft, oftentimes the things we fear were never really worthy of it to begin with. So we have to allow these transformations to take place. We have to allow the dying off in order for the new growth to emerge later. That's ultimately the theme this month, guys. It's a heavy, intense month, um, but it's a great pause and it's a, it's a great time to assess where we are what we want and how to move towards that in a better way. So in a lot of ways, you can make so much of a leap forward this month by confronting all of that inner stuff that blocks us. All right, guys, I do hope you have an amazing November. I hope you enjoy your November readings and I'll be seeing you shortly. Take care. Bye. Hello Taurus, welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your cards for November. Big month for you, big year for you. I know a lot has been going on. What I do want to say off the bat is it's so important at this time for you to pay attention to your inner yearnings, that desire that comes from somewhere. And I think this has kind of been going on for some time. I don't sense that this is like a brand new thing. In fact, I think you personally have been planting seeds since the whole beginning of the Saturn-Uranus square, which has been going on all year. And I think there's something deep down that Taurus knows they want. A lifestyle, a freedom, um, some kind of financial thing, or maybe quite literally a home of some sort. But nonetheless, there's this desire that I think you've been flirting with all year. And things tend to culminate when we have eclipses, especially when we have an eclipse in our own sign. We begin to really gain clarity. We get to see the things that were once in the dark. And this is kind of like the universe opening up a path to you that's been there for some time. But they've just kind of been waiting for you to take the reins. Now you're coming out this month, King of Pentacles. Now this particular deck is very interesting because they have two kings for each element. One is depicted in a female form and another in a um, masculine form. And this particular King of Pentacles is the feminine version. And I was kind of drawn to these flowers here within this card and these flowers here. Home is where I make it. I can find my sanctuary every day. And I don't know if you could see here inside her crown on her head is quite literally a home. And I think this is an attribute. I think this is uh, the result of a lot of hard work that Taurus has been through. 
there's probably been an assessment all year long into finding your authentic self. And I say that because your environment, what the universe is bringing to you is the star. Now, I keep talking about the Saturn Uranus square that's going to culminate again in December, meaning we can only assume November and the beginning of the eclipses is kind of the beginning of the culmination of the grand finale. And quite literally, we have you, Taurus, in your element, the card of Taurus, and your environment being that of a card ruled by Aquarius, Saturn. Now, Saturn takes on a completely different form in Aquarius than it does in Capricorn. In Capricorn, Saturn says, you cannot go beyond this point. But Uranus and Aquarius energy is the breakthrough. And so I see the environment kind of opening up for you this month in terms of opportunity. And all of those things that you had been trying or creating that weren't taking shape previously are going to begin to take shape now. I think for some of you, the recognition lies in others, meaning you're being seen, which is very much what the star card entails. There may be a promotion or, and there's definitely an element here of absolute abundance so any Tauruses out there that are worried financially or worried about whether they will have enough there is absolutely no indication in this reading that you will be suffering or um you know in any way shape or form lacking abundance this month But furthermore, I think the star is about the recognition of you, of your desires, of your dreams. Remember, it is the card of making wishes. The universe wants to deliver these wishes to you, but you have to embody them. And then I look here and we have this Empress energy next to the Four of Cups. When I see this as Taurus, like this creative, fertile energy, there's things in your life that are just simply perfect. That's what I feel when I look at that card, like this thing, this person, this relationship truly embodies what you desire. And so when we have an energy like that next to a Four of Cups energy, it's kind of where we look at life's blessings and we're like, eh. Because the Four of Cups represents disenchantment, dissatisfaction. What happens in our humanness is we see something so beautiful and wonderful and we're like, oh my, like even, you know, have you ever gone on vacation somewhere and you've been in like this beautiful place and you're like, my God, I just feel so good here. This is so beautiful. I wish I could wake up to this weather or this environment every day. And then we come home. We come home and we realize like how very much we don't really resonate with our current environment. Four of Cups. There's a dichotomy. There's, there's a contrast within these two elements what we love and what we find beautiful and what nurtures us and helps us to create something that is full of change and it's full of promise and the contrast shows us that where we are right now doesn't do that for us it isn't nurturing We may be focused on trying to make something be something it's never going to be just because we want to gain that feeling back, right? Like we've all done that, right? We go on vacation and then we come back and we're like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden we start to like remodel our house. Like I did this when I went on vacation um, 
a while back to Arizona and I just really began to like just love like that southwest flare right and I began to like bring cactuses into the house and I just it was very like subconscious it wasn't planned out it wasn't ideally like trying to make the inside of my home look like Arizona but in a way I was because I desired these things because they resonated with my soul and because I wanted to be surrounded by them. And so I brought all these things in and kind of regardless of how many cactuses you can fit in a house, and I'd like to say that I probably somebody who might have the most, that house will never be Arizona. And so we hear, we have the current energies as the king of wands. And this is the recognition, again, the recognition to take action. Because where you are isn't where you want to be, but you got a taste of where you want to go. And the king of wands is relentless. He's not going to let you be afraid. He's not going to let you miss this. And he's much stronger than this Four of Cups. See, I don't see an element of being like tied down. I don't see any oppression in this reading. Like it really is truly your choice. So if you are a Taurus out there that's like, yeah, but I could never just up and move. I could never just change my life and go to a different zip code. Well, I'm here to tell you, the universe is here to tell you, you absolutely can make these changes. And you have the strength and you have the courage and you have the tenacity. Here we have the full card, which I often tied to there. Aries energy, which is that of the king of wands. Meaning if you want it, take the leap of faith and do it. Grab it. Take it. It is yours. And there is really not much more, you know, I mean, other than like the emperor, the empress that part of us, that desire that we have. And then we have the King of Wands, which is the action to achieve it. A reminder that the Empress energy means that there's something, there's a seed that was planted within you. You embody this vision. And the universe is pushing you to start to create it. Bottom of the deck, the magician. It is time to create these visions. It's time to go after these dreams. And we have the Six of Cups and we have the Eight of Wands. Six of Cups coming up in a fear position for me indicates that even if life is hand in, handing you beautiful miracles, you're still looking at it like, mm, is this too good to be true? Is this really meant for me? Are there... Is this castles in the sand fantasy land? Am I just getting carried away with myself? And to that I say you are not. It's the desires that you are harboring within you are very much tied to your fate and your path. And I get that because along with the Eight of Wands came the Hermit card and he always lightens our path. And it does remind me of kind of this eclipse season, which is the first eclipse in Taurus. We have many more to come. But this is that light within the dark tunnel. When you're stuck in darkness, when you're stuck in uncertainty, there's always a spark of light. And I get that with that Aries um, King of Wands energy as well, this spark of light that you have no choice but to follow because it just calls to you. And the Hermit is an indication that if you follow this path of desire, it is truly the correct path for you. Now here, interestingly enough, underneath the Empress and the Four of Cups, we have the Vision Quest and the Circle. Now we have a six here and an eight here. We have a six here and an eight here. 
So again, there's an emphasis on seeds that have been planted a while ago starting to take fruition. In other words, this, whatever this empress represents to you, the perfect city, the perfect home, the perfect partner, whatever this is for you, you made a wish. It imprinted on your soul. And so when you start to move towards it, you have to understand the vision quest means the vision, the desire is part of your path. And the circle is a reminder that we are here to co-create with others. We have to give birth to this. Now, will that happen in November? Most likely not. It may not even happen in 2022 completely. This is the beginning of the story. But every good story starts with an idea and the idea grows and it starts to manifest into a physical form. And then we start to figure that physical form out. What do we want it to look like? Where do we want it to reside? Where are we going to, you know, like, what are we going to do with it? And this is definitely a process. It's not going to happen overnight, especially because we have Saturn, truth, coming out underneath its night of wands. And this is what Saturn's doing for you right now. It's not that typical like, oh no, you can never break free from these bounds. Like I said, it's not that oppressive energy where it's like you see something you want and then you're just reminded to get back to reality, Saturn. And no, Saturn is allowing you to make these changes now. The door is opening because it's part of your truth. This isn't just a fantasy. And with Saturn there, we begin to take that fantasy, quote unquote, that unrealistic expectation or that unrealistic dream, and we start to give it form, we start to give it legs, we start to make the commitment because Saturn wants you to commit to this. Which means do it without hesitation. The full card. And like I mentioned before, guys, there is that feeling that this thing came into your life a while ago and maybe you were ignoring it. Maybe you were second guessing it, thinking, oh, this isn't really like the thing or this isn't really possible or I've just got to focus on what I have now. And I, I can't be like, you know, really going after things that are just crazy and out there. But here's a card number six again, netcaster preparations come to fruition. So we've got a six, a six, and a six. And when I see sixes like this, I know that we are in an element where the universe is supporting you. Sixes represent divine timing. 2022 is a six year. It's divine timing for all of us. Look, Sometimes we got to look at the real honest to God truth of how shitty the current situation is. And then we have no choice but to look at the beautiful opportunities. This is the beginning of the story that's going to culminate through 2022. And it's going to lead you down the path that you truly belong on. So... Do not be afraid to make the investments. Do not be afraid to make the plans. Do not doubt the magic that lies behind this. This is absolutely meant for you. And the universe wants you to have it. And the universe is literally saying, it is time for you to create it, to make it real. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. Home is where I make it. I can find sanctuary every day. Taurus, one of the beautiful gifts that you have is your ability to sense and seek safety and security. But it's also important for you to know that our safety and security does not lie in the things that we own or the things that we have. It lies within us. 
And there might be parts of us that say, no, this is too hard or we can't make this move or it's going to affect other people and I just don't want to like make this kind of tidal wave. But when you are hosting Uranus, you literally are the tidal wave. Hosting Uranus means that you are bound to endure sudden and great change. Breakthroughs. Where you begin to evolve into the next version of yourself and you're, you get to evolve this storyline. Right? Maybe we're settling for a career that just pays the bills because we don't really believe we could do that thing we love and pay our bills, right? Like for us, for a realist, we're like, oh, that's just too much to ask. It doesn't, the world just doesn't work that way. Saturn. But it does. It does. We've been conditioned to think otherwise, but it actually very much works that way when we recognize the magic, the magician. That sometimes things come into our lives, ideas, experiences, because we're meant to see something. And it's meant to resonate with us and it's meant to open us up to taking these risks and these adventures. Such a beautiful reading, Taurus. You are in for such a beautiful breakthrough this month. And it's just the beginning of a very beautiful long-term phase with Saturn here. And finding your truth and where you belong in your path. Beautiful energy, guys. I hope that November is a beautiful month for you. And I will be seeing you very soon. Take care, guys. Bye.